Hello, welcome back. Uh, I think what we're going to do today is uh, do a little bit more work on my surface grinder fix. I was on the internet, I talked to a few people, I learned a lot about gearing, but the main thing I learned is I do not have uh, the tools to correctly measure a gear. But what I did come up with is a way to figure out if uh, uh, the people who built this machined it correctly so that the gears are meshing correctly. Because if they're not, that could be my problem with uh, this grinder. So, with that, let's get into this. I'm Glenn Nowakowski, and you're watching Glenn Now on YouTube. Like I was saying, we're going to have to get some measurements. I think I said before in my first video that uh, this surface sits on this surface, this pinion gear meshes with this gear rack. So what I have to do to get a halfway decent measurement is go from this surface measure down to where the gear rack is bolted onto get a dimension here record that dimension and then take the gear rack off of that slide or table and place it onto the gear rack propping it up so it is level with this surface when it is level, parallel, get a dimension from the top of that gear rack down to here. And it should be within a couple of thousands the same size. It should actually be a couple of thousands higher Because the gear, well, the dimension, when it's laying on this gear rack, actually, I'm using up all the backlash tolerance that they, when I lay it on here, what I'm going to have to do is add, say, two thousandths to the dimension I get from the back of that gear rack down to this uh, surface. If I add two thousandths, it should equal what I have here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure this, then take that gear rack off and uh, see what that measures. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'm going to wipe this off a little bit. Wipe off the surface. Wipe off my micrometer. Stuff like that down here. Now let's see. I have 300, 25, 35, 30, 37 and 5 tenths. 337 and 5 tenths. Okay. I'll probably measure it. Oh, a few more times after I get the gear rack off. But uh, for now, 337 and 5 tenths is what I'm going to go with. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is a metric. Yep. What I want to do is take this, clean it up a bit and put it on the surface grinder there. Okay, like I said, I wanna set this on here. 
And I'm going to have to take like an adjustable parallel and put it under here to adjust this. So this back of this is parallel with this surface here. All right, like I said, I have to make sure that's parallel. At its extreme ends, at least. I think this thing is bowed a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, it's about three inches in. And I bring this down to zero. And I come to this here end. Start with a 270 thousandths pin under this end. Eh, not quite. Doesn't even move the indicator. Going to 280, just move it up a lot there. It's just starting to move. Right here, about the same distance from that end. I've got 10,000 more to go. That's, let's see, this was 280. We're gonna go with the 290 and see how, can I be that lucky? Okay. Let's make sure this is set at zero. At zero. So on this end, we'll come down to this end. It's within five tenths. I would say that's good. Two hundred and seventy-one. Well, <laughs> no wonder. It, them gears are just banging against the gear rack. It's not meshing at all. Well, I see what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to shim that uh, gear rack up. Wow. China. Okay. Like I said... I measured this, that was uh, 0 0.337, and if you subtract what I have on the gear rack, here, when I set it on the gear rack, that was, let's see, minus 0 0.271, equals, 66 thousandths difference. Uh, that, <laughs> this needs to be brought up from here. 66 thousandths to mesh the same way. Plus or minus a couple of thousandths. 66, and I want some clearance in there, say two thousandths. I need to make some shims that are 64 thousandths. I bet you a 1 16th shim would work just fine. It may, it'd be a lot better than the way it is, 66 thousandths. Man, they know some precision stuff in China. Let's make those shims. All right, I looked around in my material and I happened to find some angle, square angle, 1 16th thick. Well, I figured if I measure this, cut these so they go at least halfway, on both sides, uh, that would be one sixteenth shim up. Uh, after I do that, I'm going to have to modify it. I need to cut this off a little bit low 
so it doesn't interfere with the gear rack. And I have to open up around the holes. Ah, but that's easy enough. Get some measurements and cut this stuff into the proper size. Okay. This measures 17 and a half inches. Let's see. 17.5 divided by 2 equals 8 and 3 quarters. So each of my shims have to be minimum of 8 and 3 quarters. I'm just going to bandsaw them off. And then I'm going to have to cut one of these sides off a little lower just so it don't interfere with the gear rack. And then there's a couple of spots I just have to clear away so the bolts go through. These things are goes there and goes there and there and there. That's a sixteenth of an inch. That should be high enough. If not, <clears throat> I could always add shims two thousand three, four, five, whatever it is, to bring that up. But uh I'm within four thousandths of what I measured. It's probably going to be okay. Okay, the shims look pretty good. Uh, like I said, that's a sixteenth of an inch, 0 0.0625. And when you sit down and actually do the math, I'm only a couple of thousandths, maybe two, from where it mathematically should fall to be perfect with clearance and everything. I'm pretty confident it's gonna, it's going to work unless there's all kinds of other problems. Uh, but we'll find that out in the next video uh, when we clean this stuff up and put it all together. So until next time, enjoy. Thank you.